I want to share with you some of my thoughts and learnings from product management in different industries and different size companies. Today, I want to go over five lessons learned in product management. What is going on everybody? Welcome to another video. My name is Alex. If you want to know about business and product management, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of the new videos. And of course, hit the like button if you want to see more videos like this. And I want to share with you some of my learnings. So hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. All right, let's get into it. The first item today is the backlog. So as you know, product managers, of course, are responsible for managing the backlog. That's one of the key aspects of the role. But what's interesting is that you never know when inspiration is going to strike. You never know when you're going to get a new idea and where you're going to get a new idea, whether it's going to be something that you have generated, whether it's something your users have said, whether it's any one of your cross-functional team members or any one of your immediate team members or even your friends and family or other folks that you're interacting with in the industry. You can always shoot yourself an email at any moment or if you have Evernote or something like that, where you just track all of your notes. Just take a few words of notes just so you know what's what was discussed. And the second element is have a day in the week where you dedicate about a half an hour, 60 minutes, just browsing through these additional items that have basically entered into your backlog. So if you're recording whenever these ideas strike, okay, maybe there's a new configuration or maybe there's a new way to do something or maybe there's a new experiment you want to do or an entirely new business model or whatever it is, you're going to be accumulating 5, 10, 20 of these a week and you need to process them. So take 30 minutes each Friday or pick another time where you're just going through all the items and you're figuring out, okay, what's actionable, what's not, how does this fit into the priorities, what should we do, what should we not do, what should I talk about further, what ideas at what stage. Obviously, you've got certain goals that you're probably executing on immediately, but can you plan something for next quarter? Can you plan something for the next discussion? This way, you won't lose any interesting ideas, interesting variations or combinations, and you'll be available when inspiration strikes, which could happen at any moment. If you're having a lot of different one-on-ones, a lot of different cross-functional meetings or client meetings or sales meetings, whatever it is, you might get ideas. You need to record it at the moment. Don't just say, oh yeah, that's a good idea. I have to remember to keep that in mind. No, just send an email to yourself right away and forget about it. Don't act on it immediately. Think through it on Friday, right? You don't have to respond immediately. No, yes, that's a great idea. You don't have to start dropping everything you're doing, but plan on Friday to go through it just 30 minutes just to review all those ideas and see which one of them don't make any sense, which one of them maybe should be incubated for a while, maybe let them cook for a little bit longer, come back to them, or which ones you can start talking about or maybe start planning around or going forward with. The next lesson is to always focus on the problem instead of the solution. Now, everybody makes this mistake at some point or another. I probably still continue to do this. There's different ways that you can get sidetracked from thinking about the problem, which is the correct thing to be doing as a product manager or really as a business owner, to thinking about the solution or how you can implement the solution or certain aspects of the solution, which technology should you use? How should this look? How should that look? When you get too deep into that stuff, you lose focus on the actual original problem. What's actually happening? What are you actually doing for users? How are you helping them improve their life or what problem are you actually solving for them? Whenever you don't have that top of mind and whether this is something that has to do with your end users, so a customer for instance, or these are some partners or internal customers, what problem are you actually trying to solve for them as you're tackling these issues, as you're thinking through everything? Remember to keep the problem front and center. All of us can get very excited about the tech, about a particularly innovative solution or a particularly elegant solution and we sort of get tunnel vision and we start talking and really thinking in terms of the solution. And when we forget about the problem, we forget about the user, the customer, we forget about the actual thing that we're supposed to be working on. Happens all the time. And then you can end up making weird products as a result, which don't actually solve any problem. All right. The third thing is prioritization. We talked about this in other videos. It's extremely important. The number one key aspect for product managers is often listed as ruthless prioritization. You must prioritize. And of course, you should prioritize in every aspect of your life and business and work. But I also want to give you a few tidbits which you can leverage immediately to start prioritizing. One of the first thing is you don't have to make a decision immediately. So when you're making prioritization decisions, you don't need to think about every single new shiny thing unless it's both urgent and important. So a lot of times urgent stuff will come up. Resist the urge to respond to these immediately if they are not actually important. You can put them off and do them all at the same time when you make prioritization decisions. If it's urgent and important, then you might actually have to spend some time to make prioritization decision for it right away. But then the question is, how do you make those prioritization decisions? How do you know what to work on? What to work on first? What to work on second? You're going to need 
product principles. Product principles are a few rules that you craft for yourself, your team, your product, your project, your company, or your life about how you operate in any given procedure. So that way, prioritization decisions are not always this brainstorming process where you're thinking, should I do it, should I not? What are the different variables I should evaluate and all that? But instead, you already have a done framework. For instance, your prioritization principle might be, is this helping us move forward towards our goal within the next three months? And we've defined what our goal is, whether it's reach certain growth rate or close certain business or release certain functionality, whatever it is. If it's not helping us do this within three months while taking certain resources, then we will not do it because we need to stay focused. You might have different principles because you might have a lot of resources. The more resources, the more different projects you could take on. For instance, a principle is if you are working in a factory and your principle is safety above all else, which means that no matter what, safety is your number one concern. So when you're thinking about prioritization, you're gonna prioritize with that principle in mind. You want to give yourself the fewest number of principles that you can that will allow you to navigate out of different situations that speak to your product specifically. That way, when you're making your prioritization decisions, remember your urgent and important stuff you might have to process on the spot when you're faced with a situation. Hopefully your important and not urgent items, you are separately leaving some time out at specific intervals to deal with the prioritization decisions. Urgent, not important elements, you are just leaving it either to batch it or to not do it at all. Ideally, you would not do it at all because it's not urgent or important. And even if it was urgent, if it's still not important, you shouldn't really do it. If you've got your principles, your product principles, and ideally your personal principles as well, do you have your team principles? How do you choose work? For instance, maybe we don't change our goals once we've committed to them for the quarter in order to allow us to smoothly make progress without stress. Or it could be the other way around where we do what is necessary. We are ready to change plans at a moment's notice. Fluidity, that could be our principle. So think about your principles. Think about what's important to you. Think about how you want to run the product. Of course, your product should have a vision, what you're actually trying to accomplish in the short term, long term. That's the roadmap. But separately, we're going to talk about it. But assuming you've got that, you build your principles and make your prioritization decisions according to those principles. Now, when you've done that, you can say no, which is a powerful force in prioritization because it brings people along with you. You don't just say, no, I don't wanna do this. You say, no, and here are our principles. Here's how we make decisions. First of all, no, because it's not an important item as compared to the rest of the items on our plate or as compared to the goal that we're trying to reach. If it's not important on that, then our team doesn't have the capacity to handle it. So we unfortunately have to decline. Secondly, it's saying no and making prioritization decision not to do something is extremely powerful in that you cut down the opportunity cost. An opportunity cost is something we're going to talk about separately because hugely misunderstood in organizations of all sizes. But for now, suffice it to say, when you say no during a prioritization exercise, you're limiting your opportunity cost here because you are not going to debate this further. You've made a decision. Now you're not sinking more time into it, deliberating or going down the wrong path. Very important. We should talk more about it. And I think I have a video talking about prioritization separately, but we should talk about it in another video dive a little bit deeper. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to explore the question of how to create your product or personal principles, how to create prioritization framework, and how to actually make those decisions. Number four is organization. And this is something I still struggle with, but I strongly recommend that if you are a product manager or if you're in business, you should at least keep your life and business and product organized. What that means is you're always taking notes. At the end of every meeting, you're leaving five minutes of time to actually set action items, AIs for different people, explain about what the deliverables are. You're setting agendas for meetings. When there's no agenda, you're asking ahead, hey, what are we gonna be talking about? If there's nothing, excuse yourself from the meeting or cancel the meeting altogether. You are writing down during meetings important decisions, questions that are being asked, who needs what, you're tracking the project as well. Even though there's usually project managers or program managers, they're gonna help track the actual projects. You as a product manager should still keep an eye on it in your own own organizational file. You're keeping an eye on everything that you owe, all the deliverables, you're keeping an eye on the calendar, on the roadmap, long-term, short-term, and you're getting back to the people when you said you're gonna get back to them. Again, this goes back up to prioritization decisions. Don't overbook yourself. So if you have no time, you can just say right away, unfortunately, I don't have time. I won't be able to respond. I won't be able to take this action item. That's very important. It also lives within the frame of organization and prioritization, but it's very important for you to be organized as much as possible. Don't leave things up to chance. If you don't capture the next step 
I know it can feel tedious sometimes to actually say, hey, so what is our next steps? And sometimes you don't know the next steps and it's okay to just ask the questions. If that's the case, then there's no, there's no action item. Maybe the action item is just for you to brainstorm further to set the next working session, whatever it is. But you have to take ownership of most of the meetings that you're in as a product manager. Next, delegation. Delegate and involve your team. Too often as the product managers, product owners, or business owners, we're tempted to do everything ourselves. We've got to do it right. We've got to organize everything. We know the way it's supposed to go. Don't think like that. It's a very amateur mistake. Unfortunately, again, I still make these mistakes. So I think we make these mistakes at every level. Try to change the way that you think about these things. You will never be able to accomplish more by yourself than you can with a great team. And of course, if you're a great leader, then you will have a wonderful team around you that is able to accomplish even more. But even as a great leader, you are still not doing the work yourself. You're never gonna do the work yourself. You're never gonna be able to do the same work that your team can. Team of people that usually have different assets, different strengths, that ideally should complement each other. Don't try to be great at everything. Don't try to really improve too many of your weak spots. Identify your strengths and really work on them and leverage your team members that have complementary strengths to help you in those regards, to help you in those areas. And people want to help, people want to participate. A lot of the times they're happy to help. As long as people understand what needs to be done and they know that of course responsibility is expected of them so they carry this responsibility but in exchange they get the participation, the involvement and the impact of working on this particular piece of the puzzle. Make sure you give them both. Make sure they get the praise and the gratitude and the impact from working on a project, but also they carry the personal responsibility. And people usually want that. If you give them the personal responsibility and you draw them in, first of all, your project, your product is gonna go a lot smoother, believe me. And second of all, you're gonna accomplish way more than you thought you could by trying to get everything perfectly yourself. So if you're a perfectionist as a product manager, you're gonna have a hard time. Most of the time, the farther you go in product manager career path, the more imperfect the results are going to be and you have to accept that as you scale your ability to, to affect bigger and bigger teams and products you're going to need to trust your team to get the details done you won't be able to get into the weeds on everything so pick and choose your battles of course ask for your team's opinion invite them to brainstorming sessions working sessions all that draw them in so they feel a sense of personal responsibility and you're going to have a much more cohesive team you're going to get a lot more done if you like this video, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I know a lot of you have been watching the videos but not subscribing. Make sure to subscribe. I post new videos often talking about product management, how to get into a tech career, and everything in between. Let me know down in the comments if you wanna know more about the mistakes that I've made and some learnings that I've gotten from product management career. Let me know if you wanna know about top tech, startups, mid-sized companies, what are you interested in, in the comments, and we'll make sure to cover those topics in future videos. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.